home to the World Series, the BCS, Super Bowl 42, and the Daytona 500. This is America's number one sports network. Welcome to the big show on the small track in Martinsville, Virginia. For the first time ever, NASCAR's Craftsman Truck Series is here on Fox, a series that has produced drivers like Carl Edwards and Greg Biffle. Who will it be today? Let's head trackside for opening ceremony. At this time, would you please rise and remove your hats for today's invocation and the singing of our national anthem. Today's invocation by Dr. Joey McNeil, pastor, Fort Trial Baptist Church. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this day and for the beautiful weather, for the opportunity to watch a great sporting event. May your blessing and protection be upon each competitor and their race teams and each fan and each official. Thank you, Lord, most of all for your wonderful love for each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. For today's national anthem, the Martinsville High School Brass Ensemble. America gathers every weekend for NASCAR. It's truck racing on Fox, our Hollywood Hotel truck stop, open for business, along with Jeff Hammond, the former crew chief. I'm Chris Myers. Glad you could join us from Martinsville Speedway, half-mile track, NASCAR's oldest track, and first time in some seven years that the truck series is on network television. Well, I'll tell you right now, we're really going to be in for a treat today because this is some of the most competitive and exciting finish racing we ever have, and I guarantee you right now, they're going to show them what bump drafting is all about, Martinsville style. When he guarantees, pay attention. Kevin Harvick, Dave Daytona 500 winner in the Cup Series. We'll see him tomorrow on Fox right here. It will be in this truck race. Does he gain an edge with that car tomorrow? I, I think he does. I mean, there's some, so many similarities in the truck series and the truck, the way it drives compared to the COT car. I think he will benefit. No, nothing else, his rhythm. He'll be really good tomorrow. Mike Skinner going for three straight wins. He's done that one at a time in uh, his career. Give us another driver or two to watch. Well, I think, number one, you talk about Skinner starting on the pole, big plus right there. But last fall's winner, Jack Sprague starting back there in, in uh, the fifth place. He's going to be another guy you're going to have to look out for. And Rick Crawford, fastest in practice. This is the fourth of 25 truck races this year. It's been a crazy go nut start to things so far. Today, the truck stops here. <laughs> This restart right here. We've got one of the greatest drivers in the history of our sport, Mark Martin, leading. Oh, oh look at that! Mark Martin Martin today is going to spin Mark Martin at the start. Across the start finish line, Skinner wins in California. What a great job by Jeff Hensley and all his guys. Mike 
Skinner. Well, things couldn't really be going any better for Mike Skinner. He's the point leader. He's got his 34th career pole. He gets to start up front at a very tricky track. And Mike, I'm curious, is there any other place we race where it's more important to start up front than here at Martinsville? Probably not, Ray. Uh, you know, Daytona is probably the least mo most important. Martinsville very, may very be, be the best, uh, the most important place to start up front. But that was a little bit of a surprise for us with our Tundra today. But places like here, Mansfield, Bristol, we want to start up front. All right, he's got two wins already this series, and he starts at the front of the pack. And now to Adam Alexander. Kevin Harvick starts six today, a great starting spot. Kevin, what is the key to success for you today at Martinsville? Well, I think the key to our camping world uh, Chevrolet is to hopefully we guessed right first off to, to loosen our truck up enough and, and just uh, stay out of trouble. So uh, whenever we get a chance to pit, and hopefully it's in our window and we can only pit once and be done with it. And Chris, for Kevin Harvick, it's his second truck series start of 2007. All right, thank you very much. Adam Alexander, Ray Dunlap, another driver to keep an eye on. Brendan Gaughan of the 77 truck. He starts from back of the pack here. Gone played basketball and football for George. Now back, he backed up Allen Iverson as a Hoya. Gone has a little Hoya paranoia today, hoping that Georgetown advances in the final four and that he finishes in the final four here at Martinsville. Let's head down to Chris Devona, who's with Brendan. Well, Chris, believe me, if Brendan Gaughan could be in two places at once, he would figure out a way to be in Atlanta for the Final Four and short track racing here at Martinsville. How do you keep your focus with all that going on? I got a team owner named Dad that made sure I, I kept my focus on our Chevrolet today. You know, uh, it, my Hoyas are going to do what they got to do, but now it's time for me to do what I do, and that's drive a race car. And if Dennis Setzer was driving my Chevrolet, we'd probably be in the top five, but I screwed up. We got a heck of a truck here tonight. And see if I can't take my daddy South Point Casino Chevy to the front at Martinsville, which I hate. But he has Georgetown Hoyas on board. He's got his hat on. He's ready to go. Georgetown relies on a big game. They're going to post up and go big with Roy Hibbert. That's exactly what Brendan Gaughan's going to do back here from 34th position. He's got to put on Chris a full court press. All right. Thank you, uh, Chris Devota. He hasn't had a top five. Brendan Gaughan here in Martinsville. Let's head down for these magical words. And now for the most famous words in motorsports. Today's Grand Marshal with Kroger, Christian Anderson. Gentlemen, start your engines! Ken Schrader will be driving a truck today, taking over the ride for the late Bobby Hamilton, also David Starr, who won the Martinsville Spring Race last year. Chad McCombie, who portrayed Dale Earnhardt in the movie Three, will be racing around the track. This is the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Fox. We hope you're watching. You hope you hear us loud and clear. We got a handle on things. Got a breaker on nine. This here's a rubber duck. You got a copy on me, big fan? Come on. And yeah, we definitely got the front door, good buddy. Mercy sakes alive, looks like we've got us a convoy. It was the dark of the moon on the 6th of June in a Kenworth pulling logs. Cab over Pete with a reefer on and a Jimmy hauling hogs. I says, pig pen, this here's a rubber duck. We just ain't going to pay no toll. So we crashed the gate doing 98. I says, let them truckers roll 10-4. Fox, glad to have you with us from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Here's the weather for today. Chance of rain, but so far calm, and it looks pretty good. By the way, DW in the double zero truck, part owner, and Jeff Hammond in the one truck uh, ownership there as well. As we get ready to go 250 laps, let's check the point standing. Skinner, the first here, the top five drivers, all former point champions. Todd Bodine, who won this series last year, has moved up to second. And the guys who will call the race today, let's bring them in. Daryl Waltrip, Phil Parsons, and Rick Allen. Hey, Rick, how are you guys doing? Doing excellent, Chris. And uh, you saw a veteran field there in the top ten. And we've got a veteran track here, actually. This is one of four tracks that the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series has visited in all ten of its seasons since 1995. And obviously, this is one of those race tracks where we only go 250 laps, so a lot of strategy is going to play into this one, Phil. Well, Rick, there really is because this is such a difficult racetrack to pass on that the crew chiefs will run this race like a road course. They'll start at lap 250 and back their way into their pit window. If they can go 50 or 60 laps, feel like they can go the rest of the way on fuel, they're going to stop then and leave it up to the drivers. But they're going to have to have a good handling truck to do that. Yeah, and, and you know, Phil, I was really surprised that more cup drivers didn't try to run this race today. But because of the similarities between the truck and the car tomorrow with the splitter and so many things that are similar, 
I would have wanted to get some laps in today. I think it would help my timing. I think it would have given me a little bit more comfort going into tomorrow's race. It's a little bit different tire, track conditions change. I would have been in this race today if I could have, if I could have been. You know, A.J. Allmendinger considered running this truck really helpful to getting that cup car in the race for tomorrow. Oh, I think you know, it definitely would help. See the starting grid rolling across the bottom of the screen. 34th career pull for Mike Skinner starting out in front of this field. And as he mentioned, starting in the front at Martinsville, and I'll, I'll talk to a guy who has 11 grandfather clocks in his house, is very, very important. Well, we see it time and time again. Uh, you know, if you can get out front and stay there, it's almost impossible to pass you. We talk about clean air. These trucks love it, just like the cars do. Give me the pole. Give me the front. I think I can keep, I think I can keep them at bay. <laughs> Todd Bodine's crew chief, Mike Hillman, Mike Hillman Jr., said this is probably the most important two laps that they will run in qualifying, and Todd's starting way back. They didn't do a very good job. Yeah, and most difficult as well because it's hard to put a good lap down here from, uh, from practice. Look at our race analysis. Again, 250 laps, just over 131.5 miles for this race, Phil. You see a pit road speed of 30 miles per hour. The pit window is a little bit deceiving. We talk about getting in your pit window. They can go 150, 60 laps if it's under green, but no, we're not going to have that long a green flag condition, so they're going to try to get in their window and stop. And one of the reasons are those right there. They only get four sets of tires, Daryl, for the whole weekend. Well, I think that's, that's one of the things neat about the truck series, tire management. You got to talk about track position, but I think I think in the truck series, actually, the crew chief has a lot more on his shoulders in this race than they do in, say, the race tomorrow because you don't have as many options today. Got to manage those tires. Got to get that track position and got to be sure you keep that thing and got enough fuel in it make it to the end. Truck series known a little bit for maybe bumping and banging. Is that the way we're going to see passing here today? It's the only way. I mean, <laughs> that's the only way I know of. You got to get a nose under a guy, and when the spotter says he's looking, you better give him enough room because he's coming. DW touched a little bit on the comparisons between the trucks and the new COT car. Oh, well, the, the trucks are faster. Uh, I mean, they, they put down a faster qualifying lap, but I think it's familiarity. This is the 17th race for these trucks here. They've been coming here a lot. Cut the car tomorrow, it's the first race here for those guys. So I think they're going through a bit of a learning curve. Back to what I said in the opening, I would have been in this race today if it had been me. Green flag about to fly, and obviously we've got Daryl Waltrip in the booth with us. So almost ceremonially, we'd like to hand it back over to you to get this one underway. Well, Phil, you have to set me up. You know how Larry always does. <laughs> well, hey, tighten your belts. You know, <laughs> get another right. tug on those That's belts. Right. Make sure you're comfortable in that truck and get ready for this thing. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely ready. And, of course, this is this is the most critical part of the race because there will be a lot of bumping and banging going on right here because the trucks are bunched up. Somebody kind of that chain reaction thing. But we're coming off turn four. We're coming to the green. Looks like the flagman's got it in his hands. Truckity, truckity, truckity. Let's go tailgating, boys. I knew there had to be a little bit of a twist. Side by side, they make their way through one and two. It's Mike Skinner on the inside, Travis Quapple on the outside, and now nose to tail as they make their way through three and four. The nine of Ted Musgrave is going to try to close that hole if he wants to keep Travis Quapple and that six truck hung to the outside. And a lot of times you can pass a lot of trucks on the outside because everybody is fighting so hard to get down on the inside. Sometimes there's a little lane out there that you can get by a lot of people. We saw that at Bristol last weekend in the cup race. A lot of guys made some good time on the outside, especially right after a restart. <laughs> we saw uh, Jeff Burton do that on the last restart. Jumped around the outside of Jeff Gordon. Matt Crafton in that 88 sliding sideways out of four. And we see Todd Bodine making his move. Headed toward the front. Yeah, Todd started way back in 26th position, Ray. Yeah, and the thing is, Phil, he is not feeling well today. He's got a bad case of the flu. I talked to him just before the race. He said he's taken quite a bit of IV over at the infield care center, but not feeling good at all. He wasn't feeling very well at our last race, but he's been worse today, a bad case of the flu. You know, that's something a lot of guys do. I don't know if people realize it or not, but on these hot, short tracks like this, they'll go to the infield care center and get them some fluids sometime the night before, but definitely the morning of if they think they're going to be a little weak that day. There's Getting a guy hydrated that, is big. There's a guy that's going to be really good. That's Johnny Benson, the 23 truck. A little bit different look for that truck this week. He's running the 360 OTC sponsorship on his Bill Davis truck, but won five times last year in the truck series. Got a little bit different situation this year with a different crew chief. See how that affects him as the year goes along. 
There's another truck to keep your eye on right there. That's 75 Spears truck. That is the short track king of the truck series. Dennis Setzer, the only two-time winner here at Martinsville in the truck series. And they've made a little adjustment. Dave McCarty's been the crew chief on that car forever on that truck. And uh, now Tom Ackerman has moved into that road. Tom has worked with Dave forever. It's a good change, I think. Yeah, Dave's still, still there. Dave's still there, team manager. See how it plays out. As a matter of fact, Dave McCarty was the crew chief on the truck that, I, that uh, Rich Bickle drove here from the pole to win the race back in 96. Whoa, here Whoa. we go, here we go. Sliding sideways, almost dirt track racing at Martinsville. And, and that's what you get here all day long. One guy gets a little bit loose or you don't go when you think he does and somebody runs in the back of him, spins him out. Got one around off turn four, guys. 44, Frank Cryer getting turned around in that Culver's. Chevrolet and right, so down to spin and turn four, back it down. He's right, the, right on the bottom of the track. These Frank's making his first career uh, crash right truck now, series start. Loose, Doug, off. I'm just really having to wait on the throttle. This track floor just maybe trying to talk about maybe the handling of the truck there. We take a look again at why our first caution of the day has come out at Martinsville Speedway. A lot of locking up of the tires. Yeah, the 59 of Terry Cook saw that he was in this corner a little bit too hard. He tried to slow down, locked the brakes up, made a little bit of contact with the 46 of Timothy Peters. That's that looking thing I was talking about. <laughs> Three wide at Martinsville. It just doesn't work. We'll be right back. Craftsman Truck Series Racing on Fox is sponsored by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Craftsman available at Sears. By Direct TV, just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on Direct TV. By Chevy, the most wins in NASCAR history and American Revolution. And by State Farm, great service, great race. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Pace truck makes its way off of the racing surface, and Mike Skinner still leading the field around Martinsville Speedway, ready for the restart. You know, Skinner's going for three in a row here uh, this weekend. So be the, if he does it, it'll be the second time he's done it, actually. I think he did it back uh, again uh, back in 96. He won three in a row. You know, it seems like about two thirds of the way through the year last year, Darrell, that team figured it out. Eight of the last nine races last year, he was in the top 10. And obviously, the three races this year, he's been fourth, first, and first. So that team really has it figured out. I, I think it, I, I'd actually give Mike a lot of credit. I believe Mike is. <laughs> He's 49 years old, but I think he's matured a lot, if that's possible. Absolutely, and I think it happened for whatever reason throughout, you know, throughout the season last year. They had some trouble on the racetrack. They weren't finishing the races, running extremely well, but they've got it figured out now in each race they're finishing and finishing well. I think he had that don't beat yourself things taped on his dash. <laughs> I think you had something to do with that with some of your drivers. Oh, yeah. Brendan Gaughan came in, made some adjustments. I'm surprised that Brendan is, I mean, he's running next to last right now. And that truck was awesome in practice. He gets a bad qualifying run, and here's what it does to you. Side by side, that's owner and driver. Ron Hornaday on the outside, owner Kevin Harvick on the inside. The owner, driver, teammates, the whole shebang right there in one. And as you can see, and that's the reason that uh, Harvick hired Hornaday. Don't cut me any slack any more than you would anybody else. Race me clean, race me hard. I was going to say, he's not going to put the bumper to him, though, I would hope. He will, because they think <laughs> those two guys would think that was fun. And I think that's what a lot of drivers in the Cup Series think about the Truck Series. They love to come here and race because it's fun. You got a lot of control. These, these things, believe it or not, they're the long wheelbase that they have. And the, the big spoiler on the back, they've got a lot of downforce and they're fun to drive. Nice move by the 14 of Rick Crawford to get by the six of Travis Quapple. Takes over the third spot, brings our most recent winner here at Martinsville last fall, Jack Sprague in the 60 truck, and our Daytona winner this year up to fourth. You know, a lot of people talk about the pressure Regan Smith is under in the 01 car relieving for Mark Martin. What do you think about Travis in the six? <laughs> yeah, six wins last year for Mark Martin in that truck. In it, a limited schedule. In a limited schedule, and it won every time it hit the racetrack. They had such a good run at Daytona. They end up finishing third. They were leading with 100 feet to go at the finish line, but end up finishing third. But they've been off their game a little bit the last two races. Krista, what's the word on Brennan Gaughan's team? 
Well, Brendan Gaughan just took advantage of that caution to make a slight adjustment. They put a rubber in the right rear. That is his crew member, Danny Goad, the right, the rear tire changer, that is. Brendan got on the radio and said, great job, Danny, great job keeping us on this lead lap. Danny Goad, by the way, is a Martinsville native. He is racing and crewing in front of his hometown crowd. See, these trucks, I, I don't know if the fans at home are familiar with the way they do the trucks. They just qualified this morning and they are impounded. As soon as qualifying's over with, they are lined up for the race, a lot like a Saturday night shootout. And so you don't have the opportunity to work on your truck. You don't have an opportunity to go out and try things. You start no to trouble. race the way you qualify. We got one around. That's the four of Chase Miller. No caution yet. We're gonna stay green. The, the leader, Mike Skinner, drives by. You know why, Phil? Because cautions breed cautions. They sure do. <laughs> if we can keep going here for a while, maybe we'll get strung out and we won't have so many cautions. Take one more look at what took place with Chase there just moments ago. He's on the outside of the 13 and Will Allen. Looked like Will Allen bounced off the curb. This is one unique racetrack in the fact that we have a curb on the inside. He bounced off that curb into the four of Chase Miller and turned him around. Riding along with Joey Clanton in the 09 and take a look at what he sees. We saw that little puff of smoke. Outside, going outside, inside. Then there's a, our friend Brendan with some uh, damage. Yeah, for a lot of smoke on that left front tire, he's going to want to take care of that. He does not want to blow that tire out. No, but you know what, Phil? I've seen this time and time again. These tires are so tough, the sidewalls and all, that that thing will just finally make enough clearance. It'll quit smoking. The sheet metal give enough and the tire will wear a little bit and uh, you'd be surprised. He may not have to even worry about it. Travis Quapple in that number six has dropped back a few spots. Adam, what's going on? Yeah, started second and he's dropped back to the fifth position. Wants it to roll better through the center. Tight, 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 the word on the radio. And that's something we'll probably hear a lot of out of these drivers here today. Well, that, that's the whole ball game here, isn't it, Darrell? Getting that truck turned in the center of the corner, getting it to go the other direction, yet keeping the rear wheels under it off the corner with forward bite. Yeah, and what happens is as you turn the wheel, as you put wheel into it and get those front tires sliding, then as it exits the corner, it snaps loose with you. It'll just jump sideways, and that's the worst feeling in the world here. 36 trucks on the racetrack. Three are off the lead lap now. 33 still on the lead lap. Trouble for the 30 of Todd Bodine, hearing that he had spun around. Well, he didn't lose many spots. He just got going right behind the 51 of Paul Menard. We're hearing that the 88 may have gotten into him. Let's see if we can take a look at what happened. That's Matt Kraft in the Menard's number 88. He's going to drive to the inside. Does Todd know he's there? And, and guys, I tell you, I, I know I said this already once, but when the spotter says there's a car, there's someone looking underneath you, you've got to give him room because that guy's looking and he cannot stop with the momentum he has and he'll get into it. He's spinning you out. We saw that earlier with Terry Cook, the 59 going in turn three. He saw that he was in there too hot, tried to stop, locked the front brakes up, ended up making contact anyway. Yep. Dennis Setzler, we talked. And, and, you know, I tell my spotter when I race here, don't tell me he's looking. Just tell me he's there. <laughs> We've got those little side mirrors, the left side mirrors, and if he tells me he's there, I can decide where he is. That Spears Manufacturing 75 of Dennis Setzer. We talked favorably about him earlier. He's moved up to the 12th position, but out in front of the field, it's Mike Skinner holding on. 29 laps, 30 in the book now, and he's led all 30. Second caution of the day has come out at Martinsville Speedway for the truck series. Take a look at why the most recent caution. Another one of those looking things. The yeah. 51 of Paul Menard looks to the inside of the four. Chase comes down the hill, doesn't quite give him a lane, and there he goes. Yeah, well, the problem there was, Phil, the four stayed out too long and opened the door for the 51 to not just be looking, but to actually be there. And when he comes down, there, there's no way the 51 Paul Menard could stop, and they make contact. Ford truck does a great job of staying off the wall right there. You see the 51 was right against the curb. He could not go no. any lower, but he had already committed to the bottom of the racetrack and committed into that corner. And he's one of the guys that's running the race today for some experience for tomorrow, and he may have learned a lesson there. Great view of Martinsville from the game field. The DLP ultimate picture cam giving us these shots. You know, Chris talked about this being the first race on network television in seven years, and it's probably the first truck series race ever in high definition. 
hearing that Brendan gone a little anxious coming off of pit road once again a little bit too fast and so he'll be penalized by going to the back of the line but that's pretty much where he was when we restarted last time green flag back out at Martinsville easy to speed out here the pit line the commitment line, the last pit box over there and then the next line is way out in the track when you're finally out of the pits very confusing saw Kevin Harvick look to the inside of the six of Travis Quaffle didn't quite get up far enough to make the move and you just have so many chain reaction wrecks here not only that looking thing where you get underneath somebody and they come down but and when you're bunched up like this that's stopping and going that's what gets you in trouble here Paul Menard on the outside the Menards sponsored Chevrolet on the inside with Matt Crafton driving here and there might be a little bit of an issue with the uh, 15 truck that it might have a plug wire off or something wrong with it. He's yeah. on pit road. The Bill Lester truck. Tough break for them. That's a team truck to the 51 of Paul Menard, both owned by Billy Ballou. Good equipment, and we got a problem. Problems in one. Brendan gone, getting turned around. Also, the 44 of Frank Cryer involved in this one once again. And so our third caution of the day has come out. You had just mentioned cautions breed cautions, Daryl. Brendan keeps going. He's going to be able to watch the basketball game here before the race is over with. <laughs> he got a little bit more damage. And, and listen, guys, he had a fast truck in practice, one of the top five. I got smoke everywhere right now. Yes, you do, Brendan. And but a poor qualifying effort. It just goes to show you how uncritical it is to start up front here. Now, the crew chief said this is probably the most important race to have a good qualifying effort, good starting position. And unfortunately for Brendan, as good as his truck was yesterday, had a very, very poor qualifying effort, qualified back in 34th. Next week, America's Grand Game returns to Fox with the Mets battle the Braves, or the Twins take on the White Sox, or the Dodgers and Giants renew their rivalry in high definition. The Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week returns at its new time next week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Phil, you ever sing Take Me Out the Ball Game? I have, but I've never sang it. Wrigley Field. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the way you thought that. You said Wrigley. Uh, uh, <laughs> good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> now, I have been to Wrigley Field, yeah. but I've never sang it by myself. You're referring to <laughs> Jeff Gordon struggling a little bit yeah. there with that singing. There's a patriotic fan. He's been to a lot of different fields. <laughs> a few trucks making their way onto pit road. The 88 of Matt Crafton, the 30 of Todd Bodine. Chad McCombie in the 08 also coming down pit road. Good opportunity to make an adjustment. We're only 41 laps into this race. I don't think anybody would be in their pit window to be able to run the rest of this race on this only this one pit stop. But Todd Bodine, people like that may decide, let me make my adjustment now. So when I do get in my window, I can come in, not take any extra time to do it. Chris Devoto, you're down there by the 30 pit. That's right, and it's already been a little bit of a rough outing for our defending series champion, the 30, Todd Bodine. They call him the onion. He's peeled into pit lane, making just a little bit of a slight adjustment. He needs a little bit more rotation. It's a word we hear a lot at Martinsville. He needs to turn a little bit better through these corners. And rotation, just kind of to explain that, what he wants the truck to do is roll over on that right front a little bit better. Get over on the right front so the car will basically pivot in the middle of the corner so you can get a great exit off. You can do that with air pressure. Very little banking on this racetrack, right? Very little air in that left front tire, too. <laughs> well, guys, Kevin Harvick would like to make an adjustment on his Camping World Chevrolet. He said, let's pit this time. Crew Chief Charlie Wilson said, we cannot make it yet. Right around lap 60 is when that window will open up that you could run the rest of the race, assuming there's going to be a few more cautions throughout the course of the day. So everybody looking for lap 60, and we're only at lap 42. A year ago, a record number of cautions came out. 16 cautions, 87 laps under caution, and obviously that will increase your fuel mileage. Oh, yeah, by all means, and uh, tire wear and everything else. I mean, you're riding around under caution. You're not using up anything. A lot of the crew chiefs in the garage area said that they can run about 190 laps, but they would have to have at least 50 or 60 laps of caution to be able to do that. So they're going to be counting on a lot of caution laps, and, you know, they, they may stop on lap 60, Figuring on running 190 laps, and we don't get any cautions before lap 200. Then there are a lot of crew chiefs are going to start panicking. We keep trends. Every race that we go to through the years, you go back 10 years and you see what the trends are. And the trends here tell you that at 60 laps, if I get my fuel and tires, 
I'll be able to make it to the end based on previous cautions that have been in this race over that 10 year period. One of the things that stayed the same with the truck series is they still have the 22 gallon fuel cell. So obviously they can go more miles on one pit stop. Green flag about to come back out at Martinsville. It's still Mike Skinner out in front. And I think to just note that Skinner's out front comfortably. If he gets a good stop and he can get back out in the front, he'll be fine. But you see what happens to him if he happens to get hung up uh, back in the traffic somewhere. And here's a good battle right here. But the lap truck, the four truck's going to get in the way of Kevin Harvick. Kevin won't wait. Looks like he's going to have to follow the six of Travis Quapple around the fourth Chase Miller. See Travis stay up the hill here, given that four truck. He knows that four truck's there on the out on the inside. He has to give him a little extra room. Side by side, that's Stacy Compton in the number 16 on the outside of Brad Keselowski in the seven. That's a battle for position. That's a battle for the 17th and 18th position right there. Stacy gets a little bit loose off of four. Just what you're talking about. Hard to get that power, 750 horsepower. Hard to get that hooked up off these corners. Yeah, he's trying to get down into the turn before the seven truck does so he can get to the inside. That's what he would like. He's not quite there. He doesn't trust the seven to give him the room. There he makes it. This is the home race for Stacy Compton. First time I saw Stacy was here uh, several years ago, and he did. So he loves this racetrack. I think he drove a Cup race that time when you saw him several years ago, and he was driving for Jim Harris, who owns the '59 truck that Terry Cook's driving. Also based in Martinsville. Also Whoa. based in Martinsville. That's On right. a short track, we call this a mini wad, <laughs> and that's the '59 right there, the Harris trucking Toyota of Terry of Terry Cook. I drove that truck for Jim Harris. Uh, came up here back in uh, 2002. Nice man, Jim Harris. Good guy. Side by side racing. We've seen two wide and three wide hasn't worked yet. Looked like the 51 of Paul Menard thought about making it two wide, get it, or three wide, getting in turn number three. Thought better, but back back off. There's our defending champion of this race, the 10 truck of David Starr on the outside. Again, using strategy one year ago when he made it the final 185 laps after only making one pit stop, just stayed out, weathered the storm. The nine truck of Ted Musgrave finished second that race, and he was on the exact same strategy. He ran the last 185 laps on the same tires and fuel load. Some pretty heavy racing going on right here. Looks like those adjustments they made to the 30 truck of Todd Bodine definitely helped him. Mike Bliss in that number 40 working for position, right? Mike Bliss has a pretty good truck today, guys. On lap 33, they came in, made an adjustment, a lot of uh, track bar and a little bit of a wedge adjustment on the right rear. But here's the problem for Bliss. The bracket that holds his mirror on broke, so he has no rear view mirror. He can't tell anything that's going on behind him. That is well, so difficult to, to, to drive without a rear view mirror for me, Darrell. How about you? I wouldn't want to try that. I'd, I'd be wanting to get that fixed. But on the other hand, you don't know they're there. <laughs> well, you, sorry. Would really, you would really rely on the spotter then. <laughs> Just tell, my, tell the guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't have a mirror. I don't I'm have sorry. a mirror. <laughs> you know, guys, we talk about how far these trucks can go on fuel. Well, the fact, the fact remains the tires have to be pretty good to do that, too. Jack Sprague and Kevin Harvick just ran their fastest lap of the race within the last three or four laps, and that's 50 laps into the race. One reason for that, Phil, is air pressure. Uh, we, I, I noted on the 30 truck while ago when he came out of the pits that uh, the left front tire looked almost flat. We let the air down in the tires here on the left side to eight pounds, just enough to keep it on the wheel, and knowing it's going to build up because of brake heat and everything else. Two series champions out in front. Mike Skinner's led all the laps to this point. Famous for their hot dogs, Martinsville Speedway. The fans enjoying not only great racing, but great food here from Martinsville. You're watching the Kroger 250 on Fox. Look at where our top performers in Toyotas are running. First, second, and fifth right now. Mike Skinner has led all the laps. Ted Musgrave's been behind him pretty, pretty much the whole start of this race. And Jack Sprague actually dropped back his spot. Pretty good battle two. right here, Rick. Uh, uh, this 9, 14, 2, 60. Uh, they're working on each other pretty hard for second place. The problem for the 9 right now is there's a big gap from the 5, the leader, Mike Skinner, back to Ted Musgrave. Rick Crawford sees that. You don't want any gaps in front of you. He would be more patient if if the two, uh, the 9 truck of Ted Musgrave was right on the rear deck lid of the 5 of Mike Skinner. But the fact there's a big gap, he's going to be a little more impatient than he would have been. 
Adam Alexander. When you've led 60 plus laps, you don't have to say much about the truck, but Mike Skinner has said it's good in. Just a tick tight when it goes back to the gas getting off the corner. And his spotter, Mike Swain, doing a great job of talking him through traffic. He's been saying to him, stay smooth, be patient. Skinner looking good out front. Krista? Well, if you're a new viewer to the truck series, we need to tell you about the Conway Freight Toyota Monkey. It's the mascot of Jack Sprague. You see, they were having trouble last year, so they brought the monkey to Martinsville, and Jack Sprague won this race in October. They gave the monkey the early part this year off. The monkey has not been at the track in all of 2007, but since we're back in Martinsville, Conway the monkey is back as well. Yeah, well, they didn't have a monkey on their back at Daytona when he found victory lane there. He also just got a position right there on Rick Crawford. The two of Kevin Harvick was able to get big by Rick Crawford for third, and he brought the 60 of Jack Sprague with him. So Jack now up to fourth. Two's the best truck right now. Watch them get around the racetrack. I know that the Skinner's out front leading pretty comfortably, but that two truck is coming. Ray. Hey, Daryl, you know how to tell if Kevin Harvick is having a great day? When he doesn't talk at all on the radio, a quiet Harvick is a happy Harvick, and so far hasn't said a word about anything about the truck here at Martinsville. No, Ray, the truck looks awesome. I mean, he's rolling the center, he's right on the curb, picking up the gas, and the thing is just under him really good right now. Delana Harvick, wife and owner of that truck. That's actually rare to see Delana without a fire suit. She's normally one of the wives that will sit up on the pit boxes, but wear a fire suit at races. Kevin glanced to the inside of the nine of Ted Musgrave, not able to make it work that time. But Kevin definitely has a faster truck right now than the nine of Ted Musgrave. You know how long Delane has been sitting on pit boxes? Her whole life. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Quite some back time. when her dad raced, Delane was right there working along beside her dad, and she and Kevin got married and got a car, uh, got a truck in the wall down here in uh, turn four guys looks like the 40 of Mike Bliss yep. had a right front go down on that 40 truck I was looking down there and I saw him go up the hill and I think he had a right front down yeah it sure looks like it but we've run 73 laps I think that puts up us in our window now I think we're going to see wholesale pit stops here and these guys may I decide know, I don't think I had a bad vibration right off the start and the tire blew that's Mike Bliss telling his crew chief Barry Dotson but I think we may see the only pit stop for a lot of these drivers and teams on this caution flag. Just to follow up real quickly on that 40, that has been a good truck a number of times. Boy, they've had bad luck. Mm -hmm. they, they definitely have had bad luck. Now, bad luck could come into play here if we don't get enough cautions. Can they make it? If Say we went green the rest of this race. They couldn't make it that far. Mm, it'd be hard. Yeah, I don't they think they green. could make it. That would be 177 laps. Don't think it's going to happen. But. I think a lot of guys are going to try it. They're going to count on caution laps. Oh, yeah, you got you to figure it that way. Let's see, there's a 40 back there. You can see him third truck back, and it just takes a hard right. Riding along with Ken Schrader in that fast and all dodge. Mike Skinner still out in front. He will dictate what will take place here as pit road is now open. Let's see if Mike Skinner dodges to the left. It looks as though he's coming. He makes the commitment. And here comes the rest of the field. Thirty miles an hour feel is like I mean you can get out and walk faster and you feel like you're going. Ray Dunlap. Guys, Kevin Harvick qualified six today, but he's got a bad pit stall all the way on the backside here in pit number 40. That's because the top trucks in this series were able to pick before we came to Martinsville. He knows he has a good crew and a good pit stop going. Adam? Solid day for Mike Skinner. Air pressure only four tires, and they'll top off the fuel tank. That's Skinner, top left of your screen. Ted Musgrave also making an air pressure adjustment in the top right. Krista. Down here in the 60s, some autos being called. Will it be a four-tire change or a two? They're going around to the right side to put tires there. If there's one thing Jack Sprague needs, he said, it's forward bite. An air pressure adjustment is the only adjustment. Todd Bodine creeps in as well. It's going to be a four-tire change for Jack Sprague. Forward bite, that's the one thing he says he needs. Mike Skinner makes his way around Jack Sprague. So Skinner with a great stop. Able to hold on to the top spot of all the trucks that made it onto pit road. We will shuffle all of the trucks around and find out how they came out of pit road next. Chad McCombie actually stayed out. And so he is the race leader as he brings the field back off of turn four. And the green flag will fly again at Martinsville. 
Lap trucks restart on the inside, just like in the Cup Series. Trouble, Dennis Setzer's around in turn one and two. Made a complete 360 and keeps going. Uh, no caution no yet, No caution. Darryl. Tell you one thing, though, that 44, Kelly Byers, right up in the, he's right up in the way there. He can't get going. He's causing a heck of a roadblock. Mike Skinner takes the top spot away from Chad McCovey, and so Skinner back on the point. Now, we're not used to seeing that 30 truck of Tabo Knight in this race be up front. He changed two tires on that last caution flag to get some track position. I think it may pay off for him for a while. Chad McCombie now trying to hold off Bodine as McCombie on the outside, Todd Bodine on the inside, and Todd Bodine takes second away from Chad McCombie. We talked about Dennis Setzer getting spun around. Here's one more look. Looked like the 88 yeah, of Matt Crafton was on the inside, caught that left rear corner of that truck, and around Dennis went a 360, got yeah. back going. That's on the restart, and it looked like the 88 actually got up on the curb before they ever got into the corner. Amazingly enough, Dennis Setzer, in the 16 years we've run here, the only driver to ever win this race twice. There's a four truck of Chase Miller, another problem over in turn number four. Got clipped going down into three and turned him around, similar to what happened to him a little bit ago. He's leaving, what's happening to him, uh, Phil, is he's leaving that door open going down in there. He's making a real late entry into the corner. It makes it look like he's leaving you room to get in. You gotta drive it in a little straighter when yeah. somebody's behind you. Chase Miller struggling. <laughs> In this one at Martinsville, our first short track race of the season. See how wide he is out there getting down into the corner? He's making it look like he's saying, come on down in here, I'll give you room. Look like uh, A.J. Amendinger might have helped him out that time. Fifth caution flag of the day. Skinner back out in front of the field. Fast all race summary. Three different drivers have been out in front. Mike Skinner, Chad McCombie, and Ted Musgrave have led laps. See the average green lap, green speed is 66 miles an hour. That's that's pretty slow there, but that obviously counts the caution laps also. 29 trucks on the lead lap thus far. In the race for the next Cup Series right here at Martinsville Speedway tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. on Fox. That's 500 the, laps around yeah. this racetrack. Just, uh, the, car the car tomorrow. The car tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> the second run for the car of tomorrow. 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 Yeah. Right. Again, you see the front of a truck, and it looks very similar to the front of car of tomorrow. The, at the wind, from the windshield forward, can't tell a bit of difference in them. See, there's a splitter right there on the front of that truck. That's what the car of tomorrow, the COT, has. Now, that's a traditional rear spoiler on these trucks, but we have a wing on the back of the COT. A little bit departure since 1971, the last time we saw wing on a vehicle. Yeah, actually, the car tomorrow, I'm going to start calling it the box car. Because <laughs> that's kind of what it looks to me like. It looks like a big box car. Get lap trucks on the inside on the restart. Brendan gone trying to hold on to a lead lap, but can't do that as he's three behind. Let's crank it up, though, at Martinsville Speedway. <laughs> spot Mike Skinner in front of Todd Bodine Mike Skinner in the five Todd Bodine in the third again a problem on the front stretch Craig Kinzer in the 47 Matt Crafton in the 88 come on Craig keep going turn off of him and come on Caution flag has come out once again, the sixth caution of the day. I was just going to mention how come Brendan was running as hard as he was to stay in front of the leader. Well, there's the reason why. He gets one of those two laps he was down back, and he gets it back the easy way. Because he knows he's not going to get a free pass if he's not at least one lap one down. Lap so down. He, he has to earn some of those laps back, and he did it. Take another look at how all this damage took place. 
I'll be right. You see the 88 of Matt Crafton. Watch, watch in front of here. He's going to get into the left rear quarter panel of Craig Kenzer in the 47. Then, then they get hooked together. I think then there might be some disagreement about, uh, you know, who, who, who did what here. Dennis James, our flagman, gets a view of this one. Matt really didn't have enough room to try to go where he was going under under Craig there in the 47 truck. Should have uh, probably backed off a little bit. The 88 should have. Ill feelings down there, right? Well, when you see these disagreements, this is basically the end of it. This has been going on for about three laps down here. Craig Kinter has been saying he felt like possibly they're down a cylinder here in that 47 truck, and he's got caught on the high side a couple of times. Crafton just wouldn't let him have back into the inside lane, and it's been about a three-lap disagreement. That was just the end of it. We'll see that on occasion in the truck series. Yes, well, you can uh, kind of di discuss things like that on a short track. Chris Myers and Jeff Hammond, what do you think so far in this one? Watching from the Hollywood Hotel, Rick, uh, Mike Skinner, who led the first 74 laps uh, back out in front, uh, Todd Bodine, Chad McCombie, and what's catching your eyes so far, Jeff? Right now, we're starting to see some tempers starting to kind of flare up right now, Chris. I think this is what's going to happen at this la final caution flag, or the last caution flag where a lot of the teams came down and hopefully made their final stop. Now a lot more pushing and shuffling because track position is going to become important. Skinner came in the hot driver, Todd Bodine, Bodine who won this championship last year, running into some trouble. Matt Crafton bumping into him. That's Bodine in the 30. And as we reported, battling the flu coming into this race, needed an IV before taking to the truck here. And then moments ago, Brendan gone, having trouble after getting into it with Frank Cryer. There's no Cryer in truck racing here. And Chase Miller, youngest driver in the race at age 20. This was the second of his third spins involved here. Ted Musgrave, by the way, at age 51, the oldest to win in the truck series back when he was 49, staying in contention and this, moments ago. Yeah, this is the latest caution right here with Matt Crafton and Craig Kinzer. They get together off of turn four. Not there again, you see what happens when you have a short track race. They get the victim banging right there coming off the turn. Craig feels like that Matt did him wrong, so he says, hey, you're going to wreck me. I'm going to wreck you back. Bodine started at the back of the pack, has worked his way up. How about Kevin Harvick, who again we'll see tomorrow, NASCAR on Fox in the Cup race, currently fourth. He's just out there on a little sa Saturday afternoon drive right now, nice and smooth. But here's a guy right now that's really made a huge jump, started back at 26, all the way up to second, made some great pit strategy, and we'll see how it plays out. Now, now these trucks at the 90 miles per hour at times, they actually qualified faster than the Cup cars, uh, even though uh, we heard the pace uh, mentioned by Ray uh, slow with the caution flags. Why is that the case? Case. I think the key thing is these guys, they know these trucks. They've been coming here for many years. They were able to get them hooked up, make them turn through the center of the corner better than the new COT car. Let's rejoin DW, Phil Parsons, and Rick L. Craftsman Truck Series, their next race actually a month away in Kansas. Then Charlotte and Mansfield. Kansas and Charlotte, we're back on speed, our normal home for the Truck Series. And Mansfield will be right back here on Fox once again. Quick note on uh, Todd Bodine, the 30 truck. That two tire change, I believe that's a short ter term gain. I'm not sure it's not going to result in a long term loss, though, because with just two tires, if you're planning on trying to make it to the end, that's going to hurt him at the end. But he pitted back on lap number 41 and put four tires that on then, so his left sides only have about 30 more laps on him than do the other competitors. Got to remember Chad McCumpy in the 08 actually stayed out when the rest of the field came in and he's only dropped back to third. So trying to stay up front as the green flag comes out once again. Oh, no problems, Aaron Fike in the one gets turned around coming into turn number one. Darrell, what did you say We're about caution? We're still green. We're still green. Green uh, flag stays out. I said we're not going to have one. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it looks like we're not the only one that recognizes that as a problem. If I was Aaron Fike, I would have sat there until NASCAR put that caution flag out because he's obviously going to find himself now at least almost three quarters of a lap behind. Take one more look at the restart. Let's see what happens going down here. Is uh, I think you'll see this black truck of. Hmm. Uh oh, hmm, that's Mr. Uh, that's Mr. Amendinger, uh, which truck is that, Daryl? Well, that's Jeff's truck around backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and Daryl's truck maybe got him that way. 
It looked like the one of Aaron Fike. Actually, there's <laughs> Jeff. What, Sorry, what's going it. on there? Guys, Sorry. That, that right there does not work too very good. I'm, I'm getting ready to have to come out of this hotel and go down to your pit, man. I'm hate to tell you this. Oh, you got, got cut down on me. Problems now for Kelly Byers in the 21. That truck stops in turn number two. And so that's our seventh caution of the day. These Come guys on. really need these caution laps, so they're pretty happy about a lot of these cautions. Under caution once again from Martinsville. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway in Martinsville, Virginia. A slightly overcast day, but a good day for truck racing. T. Taylor Warren right there, photographer, was talking to him yesterday, Daryl, and he said he came here the, for the first time in 1951 and been here every year since. I tell you, he's shot a lot of pictures at this place and a lot of, uh, of the program covers and everything else. He's been around a while. And obviously, you historians of the sport know he was the one who had the picture of the finish of the 59 Daytona race that took like almost a week to decide who won it. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> You know, it's been a tough day. Obviously, Daryl, you've been associated a little bit with a tough day for Jeff Hammond, but just recently seeing Aaron Fike getting turned around, obviously that's that's got to be disturbing for Jeff. Yeah, I always told him if, you, if you're dumb, you're going to have to be tough. And you have a red bull. <laughs> here's, here's the way it started. <laughs> Actually, a little loose, I think, in the corner there for Hammond. Did, did you see him look at Chris Myers like, yeah, why did you do that? He thought Chris pulled the chair out from underneath him. He got down on the bump stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then your your Red Bull took care of his Red, red horse. horse. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't we don't we say isn't isn't it Chris Myers that says we kid because we care? Is yeah. that right? No, we kid because we can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Do we get the chance to defend ourselves at all? Go right ahead. Hey, that works hey, again. Hey, hey. hey, get it. Well, you, you both got me once today. Daryl got me the second time. Who wants the third shot at me? Rick, huh? Rick is next, okay? Rick, 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 are you next? Is that what it is? Phil, gonna... I thought you were going to help me out here a little bit, buddy. I mean, come on. Give we're, me a break. We're laying off of we were, you, Jeff. <laughs> you already had a tough first half of this race. Yeah, we got to go racing now, Jeff, so we'll get back to you. Back for the green flag. Again, this one is a 250 lap race, 142 to go. Out in front, it's still Mike Skinner, Todd Bodine, Chad McCombie, Kevin Harvick, and Jack Spray. I tell you, uh, watching uh, Skinner on that restart, Phil, he was backing them up pretty good there, coming down, kind of dragging up there to the restart line. You know, he did a great job at Atlanta with Clint Boyer, who was leading the race, got into him, got him wiggling a little bit, was able to drive by him on the outside, end up winning that race. He knows how to get it done on the restart. Ron Hornaday right now, who's the restart masters back in six, but you don't you don't want to ever have a restart with Ron Hornaday on your rear bumper. <laughs> no, just ask Mark Martin. <laughs> I was say, that. We saw that earlier this year when yeah. Ron Hornaday got into the back of Mark Martin, spun him around on the restart. There's Ron right there. That just made a little contact with the 88 of Matt Kraft, and that's Jack Sprague right there. We're riding with him in his Conway Toyota. In the truck series, names like Jack Sprague, Ron Hornaday, Mike Skinner, they were definitely the pioneers in this sport. You, Lab truck in front of you. you know, it's amazing. Chris talked about it at the very top of the show. Top five in points, all former champions of the truck series. Seven of the nine champions that the truck series has had in the past are actually in this race right now. Only two missing, Greg Biffle and the late Bobby Hamilton. I mean, you know, in this traffic like this, it's like bumper cars. Guy in front of you goes, and then all of a sudden he doesn't go, and you hit him and the guy behind you hits you and then you get pushed up out of the way and then you try to cut down on the guy beside of you. And AJ Allmendinger just got eased out of the way by the 75 of Dennis Setzer. See Rick Crawford the 14 moves to the inside of the six here. Here's what happened just a moment ago with the Red Bull. Yeah well just remember one long ago that we saw Dennis Setzer going around in circles on a restart so uh, he's made a nice recovery. Take a look at Johnny Benson. Coming up on Travis Quapple, a little, a little too aggressive. He slides up the racetrack. Quapple slides, and Rick Crawford sticks the nose of his number 14 on the inside of the six. He and just drove in the back of the six that time. That wasn't a look in inside. He just hit him in the back. And so many times, though, it's a failure to communicate. The guy leaves that door open just enough that you're not sure if he's letting you in or not. So uh, that's what happens sometimes. You just fail to communicate, and you make contact. One guy who hasn't been involved in too many bumping and banging incidents today has been Kevin Harvick, right? 
Well, he's just trying to keep the fenders on that thing. He's got a very, very good truck, and he says it gets a lot better when it goes on a long run. Now, remember back in July of last year, they ran a Bush Grand National race here. Kevin Harvick won that day from the sixth qualifying position. Today in his truck, he started sixth. Tomorrow in the next Hell Cup Series, he starts sixth. He also had a lot of trouble here a few years ago. You remember he got uh, had a little meeting in the red truck and uh, he didn't get to race the next day. Yeah, so after a truck race. After a truck race. Was that his sixth time in the big truck? I saw a pattern there. I didn't know if you were relaying that. Mike Skinner checking out on the rest of the field. Todd Bodine trying to hold on to second. Adam? You talk about a guy like Mike Skinner who's out front the way he is, and he's very relaxed. Under that last caution, his crew chief, Jeff Hensley, said, keep in mind, we're probably not going to stop again. Skinner came back and said, you keep track of the crew chief stuff, and I'll just drive. Hensley said, you keep your best driving for the end. And Skinner said, all we need to do is get out of here with a top 10, and we'll be fine. I think he's thinking a little bit more than a top 10 right now. He's led 111 of the 118 laps. I think he's, he, he, wants, he would like to have just a little bit more than a top 10. But we have seen Mike Skinner start in the front of the field, dominate the race, and then late in the race, problems. He's either blown out the right front tire or something has happened to that truck where he hasn't had the finishes that we expected. But it yep. hasn't been lately, as we talked right. earlier. Two-thirds of the way through the season last year, all of a sudden, bam, he started finishing. Eight of the last nine races in the top 10 top four finishes the first three races this year. Yeah, well, talking smack to your crew chief isn't the smartest thing to do either, you know? <laughs> I was wondering about that. I know if I was a crew chief, I'd say, look, dude, you work your hands and quit working your mouth. You make better time. You worry about the crew chiefing. That reminds me of Days of Thunder when he said, don't, don't come in. We're having an ice cream right now. <laughs> Enjoying the day at Martinsville Speedway. Craftsman Truck Series Racing on Fox is sponsored by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Craftsman, available at Sears. And glad to have you along for the Craftsman Truck Series race from Martinsville, Virginia. And Mike Skinner has led all but seven laps. We have 118 laps to go. He's trying to make history and win his third straight race for the second time. Ron Hornaday, Greg Biffle, Todd Bodine have won three in a row in the Truck Series. Todd Bodine, Kevin Harvick following him. It's been a rough day for the youngest driver in the field. In the four truck, Chase Miller, who is on pit road, attempting to get back into this race. Jeff Hammond from Nashville, Tennessee. He's been chasing trouble, either trying to avoid it or get into it all afternoon. He's been he's been in a spin cycle about all day long, Chris. I mean, he's been around on two or three different occasions. And the last time uh, he went around, he really got in that outside wall extremely hard with the driver's side, had to make some repairs to the truck. And they're trying to get the young man some seat time. They got him back on pit road. They're trying to get him back out so that he can, you know, master this racetrack. I'm telling you right now, this is a tough race track and you've got to be smart and you've got to be patient but back up front take a battle right now going between last year's champion 30 truck of Todd Bodine and Kevin Harvick I mean Kevin's putting a lot of pressure on and Rick Crawford has moved up to sixth as well as Chad McCombie slips back just a little bit let's uh, rejoin Darrell Walter Phil Parsons and Rick Allen thank you guys and as you mentioned this battle right here for second heating up Todd Bodine and Kevin Harvick Harvick's been very patient so far until he got to here. <laughs> He'd been wearing that back bumper out on that 30 truck. Todd's holding uh, Kevin up, and Kevin's kind of telling him, dude, let me go. We got a long way to go yet, and you're holding me up. Yeah, it was obvious that the 08 of Chad McCombie was holding Kevin Harvick up in the two truck, but Kevin showed a lot of patience there. He didn't just knock him out of the way. He took a number of laps when he finally got by him. Then he just drove away from him, drove right up to the tailgate of the 30 of Todd Bodine. And Todd Bodine was one of those drivers who did pit strategy, only taking two tires to get his position. So when do those start to fall off? Well, I'm, uh, Phil made the point he took four earlier, I guess, and uh, but still, 25, 30 laps on his on your left side tires over what everybody else has is going to hurt you eventually. Ray, is Kevin getting a little bit fed up with Todd Bodine? Well, he's he's trying to be patient again, guys, because he knows he has such a good truck. And believe it or not, this is a brand new chassis that he's running today, chassis number 15 out of the Kevin Harvick stable. Now, Ron Hornaday did some testing on short tracks in the last couple of weeks. Harvick did not drive this particular truck, but but they did bring a brand new truck. I thought that was a little odd. You can tear one up pretty easy here at Martinsville, but they said you got to bring the truck that's able to win, and they believe they have it today. Yeah, Ray, you, I mean, you bring your best piece every week. That was always my theory. You don't save anything. What are you saving it for? 
If you can win, bring it and race yeah. it. What's the most important race of the year for these truck guys? The next one, this That's one. This one, exactly yeah. right. Kevin Harvick still all over the back bumper of the 30, and another truck trying to make up on maybe a slower pit stop, the 14 of Rick Crawford. Adam. He pitted at lap 75. The stop was not as good he would have, as he would have liked. When he came in, he was running inside the top 10, Rick. But when they restarted, he had to restart 14. So I think a sign of how good this truck is, the progress that Rick has made since the restart. Starting 14th, and he's already back up to the sixth position. Krista? Well, we want to tell you about Johnny Benson. We haven't talked about him much today. He started 17. He was running in the top 10. Early in the race, he was afraid that he had a tire going down. He said the truck was bad loose, but he just needed to wait for the air pressures to come up. Back on lap 104, his crew chief, Trip Bruce, said a couple more caution laps, and we should be good on our fuel. But Johnny just got on the radio and said, I'm trying to get up there. I cannot keep up with these guys. Well, the guy setting the pace is the five of Mike Skinner. Take a look at the intervals between Skinner and second place. Todd Bodine, Kevin Harvick, Jack Sprague, Ron Horn today. There's the 14 of Rick Crawford, Ted Musgraves, the 9, the 6 of Travis Quapel, and the 0 8 of Chad McCombie. Chad McCombie, one of those drivers who stayed out on the most recent pit stop cycle that most of the trucks came down. He's beginning to fall back just a bit. Eric Darnell in that 99, getting by the 59 of Terry Cook. It's a battle for the 14th spot. Eric Darnell takes over 14th away from the 59 of Terry Cook. There's the 36 of Tyler Walker. He's trying to get that spot from the 59 of Terry Cook, and he's able to do that. And there's Kenny Schrader, the fast and all dodge number 18. That 36 of Tyler Walker, he was a dirt track driver in, in the open wheel ranks for quite some time. Actually, he is the reason why Carl Edwards does a backflip when Carl wins a race, because Tyler Walker did that when he would win his sprint car races. And Carl thought that was pretty cool, so I might try that. Tyler Walker, his first full season in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. What's that thing about uh, imitation? It's uh, the greatest, greatest form of flattery. Since sincerest form of flattery, well, you think Tyler's flattered? I would hope so. I think so. And Carl always gives him credit for yep. being the first one, too. Mike Skinner, one of only three drivers to be out in front of the field, and he continues to dominate at Martinsville. Can he hold on? We're going to find out. Craftsman Truck Series Racing on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. This is Budweiser. This is beer. By Fasadol. We get it right. By McDonald's. And by Toyota. Moving forward. Eighth caution of the day has come out. A little bit of debris still on the racetrack. It was the 51 of Paul Menard that had problems, and then this taking place behind him. Here's Brad Keselowski, the seven truck. He's going to get a little bit loose and has to chase it up the hill. The 50 of TJ Bell thinks about going to the inside, but by that time, the 09 of Joey Clinton had already closed up that hole. And this right here is what hurts. Ah, oh, man. Right in the driver's door. Right along with the 09 involved in this one. Four by six. Now right there, he's saying he's made a good move. Whoops. And then right here, he thinks he made another good Ooh. move, but whoops. Hey, come on, come on, Crawford's out. Get out there, buddy. Chad McCovey now in the pits. Adam? They were going to be 40 laps short on fuel because they pitted at 41, unlike the other guys that come down at lap 75. Four tires, fuel, and a chassis adjustment for Chad McCovey. He has been tight. Take a look at this. Trying to make an adjustment and didn't get the wrench off. Now he's going to get run over. He's going to get backed over. Goodness gracious. The rule is you cannot leave your pit with any equipment. And obviously that wrench would be considered a piece of equipment, so he had to stop and get rid of that wrench before he could go out back onto the racetrack. We used to have a policy. We used to say, Jeff would say, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you sound like you <laughs> were saying, like, no, go, go, go. go, go. Yeah. And so we finally had to come up with a deal. Stop, stop <laughs> now. <laughs> Problems with the 51 of Paul Menard. 
Ray Dunlap, what's going on with him? Well, he has climbed out of this Menard Chevy and taken a look under the hood. Paul, what put you out today? Uh, something broke in the motor. We uh, really find it all day. We were really tight, couldn't roll through the center. Um, brakes were giving up, so it was just an ugly day. But you know, we uh, we practiced really good yesterday. Didn't really do a whole lot of long runs, and we probably should have. But you know, Billy Blue and Richard Waters built an awesome race truck. Um, I just didn't do my part as far as trying to get it to drive a little bit better. So we'll, you know, it was fun. We learned some things, and we'll go on. Okay. Good luck to you. And when this Menards or the, this number 51 goes back on the racetrack, we'll be at Kansas City, and Kelly Sutton will be behind the wheel for the next race. And, and and I think that was one of the things we said in the opening. I learned some things for tomorrow, and I thought that would have been a really critical thing for today for more guys to have run, learned some things for tomorrow that are going to race tomorrow. A lot of work being done on pit road and a lot of work with the craftsman tools taking place. Jeff Hammond, I think you know a little bit more about the tools of the trade now, don't you? As someone who still enjoys doing his mechanical work, I understand how important it is to have the right tools, but also the right way to store and organize your tools. And guess what? The folks at Craftsman have the exact thing you need to have right here today. It's called the grip latch ball bearing drawer slide mobile toolbox and folks what that means is if you've got your tools you need to have them in the right kind of storage facility this toolbox kind of covers it all whether it's big hammers it's your wrenches your pliers whatever you need and the smart thing about it is with this new grip latch design it just won't fly open you've got to really work at it but when you want it to come open it comes open very smoothly the ball bearing design really works very well with that again the folks at craftsman have the right way to handle your tools Craftsman's been the title sponsor of this series since its inception back in 1995. Yep, my man, no hassle, Hammond. Under 100 laps to go, do you think the strategy of stopping that one time is going to win this race? I, I absolutely think it's going to win this race. Obviously, Mike Skinner is on that strategy. And are they bring, are they going to sit lunch up here for us, Daryl? Bring those right on up here, folks. <laughs> I would say I think it smells good, but can't smell through the screen yet. We'll be right back with more racing from Martinsville on Fox. One of the unique characteristics of Martinsville Speedway is that a train track runs just behind the backstretch. Actually, probably not even 40 yards from the backstretch to that train track. Now, was that an engineer, Darrell? That used to be the only kind there was. <laughs> there it goes. There it goes an engineer right there. <laughs> and we're hearing that the 16, Stacy Compton and the 59 of Terry Cook ran the paddle exiting pit road, and so they will be penalized for that. Some Belling sponsorship on that Express Motorsports Ford now for Dave Fuge. Stacy Compton giving that truck a ride tail into the longest line which is better than losing a lap still seeing the pace truck driven by Randy Kaiser out there on the racetrack so not about to go green as of yet next week America's grand game returns to Fox with the Mets battle of the Braves or it's the twins taking on the White Sox or you can watch the Dodgers and the Giants renew their rivalry in high definition again Fox Saturday baseball game of the week returns at its new time 3 30 p.m. Eastern Ray Dunlap, what's the strategy you're hearing down there? Well, guys, get your calculator out. Here's the deal. We've run 42 laps of caution since we pitted on lap 74. What do these teams need to get? They need between 57 and 59 total laps of caution to make sure that they're in their fuel window. So we're still a little bit short. If we get another big long green flag one, these guys might be a little nervous down here. They need between 57 and 59 total laps of caution. I think we're going to be inside of that. Obviously, we've got 88 laps to go. And I don't think we're done with the caution flags yet because, number one, we're getting ready to have a restart. Yeah. Gonna, all the fields are going to be completely jumbled up here. We're going to have some fast guys at the back that made pit stops on this last most recent caution flag, and they're going to want to get to the front. Oh, yeah, you got this inside line. That creates havoc. Then you got tires that are good, tires that are not so good. You got some comers and goers. This ought to be fun right here, boys. You talked about needing upwards of 50 laps of caution to this point we have had 40 laps of caution not counting this most recent caution flag right now so and that's through eight cautions if we would do that one more time we would obviously tie the record of 16 cautions here at Martinsville but we don't want to tie that record yeah and what Ray's talking about 57 to 59 laps of caution that is from their last pit stop 
I mean, all these guys are the majority of the leaders pitted on lap number 75, so they're talking about 57 to 59 from that point in the race on. We think that 47 truck has an issue, maybe a, down on a cylinder, down a cylinder. Let's see if that, that could cause some problems on this restart. If I was down a cylinder, I believe I'd be getting out of the way. We saw the 44 of Frank Cryer, who started up front there, uh, caused some problems on the most recent restart. Green flag again flies from Martinsville. Two wide going through one and two. Mike Skinner, Todd Bodine, Kevin Harvick, Jack Sprague, and Ron Hornaday are your top five. Now this is when uh, Mike Skinner looks in his mirror and says, man, I haven't seen anybody that close to me all day. See if he's got, a, got anything left in that little uh, tundra. Two Toyota Tundras out in front of the field and a Chevrolet, another Tundra and a Chevrolet, your top five. Have a couple lap trucks behind the front three. That's the 47 of Craig Kenzer, the 09 of Joey Clanton. They're in front of our fourth place truck of Jack Sprague, the 60. Don't look at this. This three wide. We've seen it before and it didn't work out. And it looks as though calmer heads prevail. Yeah, well, it worked well, that we're time. We're not done yet. Let's either. try it again. Yeah. Let's give us one more shot. Willie Allen stuck on the outside in that fluorescent green, number 13. This is the 99 of Eric Darnell, the 46 of Timothy Peters. Timothy making a rare truck series start, first start of the year. Looks like Eric Darnell is going to be able to make the move on the inside. Arnell's doing a pretty good job in that 99 of getting it around the bottom and working the traffic pretty good. It's working out for him right now. He's got the 64 right there. Jimmy Simpson going to be in his way. He's going to have to go around the outside. 21 of Kelly Byers took the green flag, or actually the caution flag came out for the seventh time because of him. He's making his way to the garage, and now Dennis Setzer trying to make his way toward the front. Krista. Well, like you guys said, keep your eyes on the 75. You know, Phil had mentioned what these guys did back on their pit stops on lap 75. Dennis Setzer took fuel only, so he needed the fresh rubber. He felt like that was going to make the difference, and why not? Because he had no forward bite. They made a slight adjustment. It helped with his really loose condition up off the corners. Remember, Dennis Setzer, the only guy who has won here more than once. He is a two-time winner back-to-back -back in 02 and 03 at this short track. You know, Dennis Setzer is one of the nicest guys on the racetrack, Daryl. And he's running 13th right now. He's going to have to use that front bumper pick. For him to get up here and contend for this win, he's going to have to pass some trucks. It's awfully hard to do that here at Martinsville without using that front bumper. Yeah, I think right now he just figures, I got better tires. Maybe uh, these guys will back up to me. But you can see, here goes the leader into turn three. He's down here in the middle of one and two. It doesn't take long for that leader when he's up front like this to come around and put you in jeopardy going to lap down. Talking about using the bumper. Potentially, we could be using the bumper, or Kevin Harvick maybe using the bumper on Todd Bodine. Right there is Dennis Setzer going by the start finish line. So that's the difference between our leader and Setzer. He's already over 10 seconds behind. We've got to spin. Sorry about that, Jeff Hammond. It looks as though your truck got turned around, but we're staying green. We're still green. 64 came down on us. Aaron Fike in the number one got turned around. Take one more look at that as our leader gets by Aaron Fike now. Sounds like the 64 had uh, something to do with this, according to the spotter. There's a 64 right there, Jimmy Simpson. Comes down, doesn't leave quite enough room for the one of Aaron Fike. I think Aaron really drove it in hard, trying to be sure that he was in that opening and got in a little hot, and actually he uh, added a little bit of a to that problem. And right there in front of you, the pie. Still outside 36. Green, green, green. I had, I'd made the comment. Sorry about that, Jeff yep. Hammond. Jeff Hammond, one of the co-owners on the number one, and we've seen that go around. Jeff's had a tough first half of this race, so I was hoping that it was going to get better. And he comes in here as a defending champion, so it's even worse. Yeah, that is the truck that won this race last year with David Starr driving it. It had a different number then. It was number 11. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is the same Red Horse Racing team that won this race. Still a continuing battle for second with a 30 of Tabo Dine and the two of Kevin Harvick. 74 laps to go. Daryl, when do you get impatient? Uh, you got a little time yet. Uh, you don't want to do anything stupid right now. You don't want to give a guy a chance to come back on you. So you might want to wait a while. 
get inside about 30 laps. Then you start getting aggressive. But the difference now between Skinner and Bodine and Harvick is increasing to the point where Kevin Harvick might not be able to catch Skinner. Yeah, right now, nobody has anything for Skinner in the five. Uh, he's out here. He's two tenths quicker than these guys back here. So he's in pretty good shape right now. Mike Skinner still holding on to the front spot. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Hey, man, Martinsville Speedway. Got to save the brakes. Beat to bang it. The way racing ought to be. Oh! A little bad blood there. Yeah, that's not going to be good. Once they drop that green flag, you don't know what's going to happen. Oh, no, no. Inside. No, no, no. no. What I've always liked about this place, there was an atmosphere here that was like no other place we go. Jeff Gordon scores his 71st career win and his sixth of all You can feel the emotion of the fans in the stands here. Big Orange, Tony Stewart gets the win. Doing a little thing called NASCAR on Fox. Fox and Speed's coverage of NASCAR's weekend in Martinsville continues tomorrow, beginning with NASCAR Race Day on Speed, and then it's next Nextel Cup Series racing on Fox. Followed by NASCAR Victory Lane on speed. Our coverage of NASCAR continues all weekend long across the Fox Networks. Ninth caution of the day has come out. Blake Bjorklund in the eight got spun around. That's Chad McCombie in the zero eight. Take one look at who come into the right side of your screen. He was all by himself, uh, just right in the middle of the corner of the car. The truck just spun around with him. Uh, not sure if something mechanically happened to it or not. Doesn't look like it is going again. Something mechanically happened to the back of that truck. He's been hit a few times. We've had a few accordions over the over the course of the race. Trust me, if you can get out of here with that little bit of damage, you'll be tickled to death. Ray Dunlap, how's Kevin Harvick feeling now? He's feeling great, I'll tell you what, Ricky. Uh, he, he's just holding his stuff there. I think you'll see that Camping World Chevy up to the front in a little bit. But I'm sure there's one guy that's watching this race. Back in Nashville, Tennessee, Mark Day was supposed to drive this truck today here. He won an award called Operation Big Chance from one of the sponsors, Dollar General, at Kevin Harvick Racing. But for some reason, they weren't able to get the schedule worked out where Mark could come and test this truck. And Kevin said, there's no way we're going to let him drive this brand new race truck at this track without having a chance to test. Harvick thinks he's got a shot to win. I bet Mark Day is wishing he was driving the number two. And Mark Day is from Nashville, and he stayed back home because of his team that helped him win that opportunity. He didn't want to disappoint them. They had a test at the fairgrounds in Nashville. He wanted to go there and, rate, and test his car there. They said he had to come here. He couldn't do it, so he passed. Loyalty to his uh, team at home. Green flag flies as we have the DLP Ultimate Picture Cam giving us the view coming out of turn four into the start finish line. It's still Mike Skinner out in front. Todd Bodine running second and Kevin Harvick in third. Now Todd Bodine hasn't been able to keep up with Mike Skinner, but very few trucks have today. Our top Todd three have been able to clear the lap traffic right now, but Todd Mike Skinner has really set a torrid pace. Each and every restart, he just steadily drives away from the field. Yeah, he just uh, he doesn't seem to be abusing his truck. But he has led a lot of laps, and he's been out front a lot. Three, by three. That's Mike Swain telling him that he's clear by three truck lengths over the 30 of Todd Bodine. Skinner trying to make it three in a row, and three wide again as they come out of the corner. That's Man. Jack Sprague right there. There's Rick Crawford looks to the inside. He's already got a little damage on his right front corner. I think Jack's in big trouble. He got run over down here in uh, three and four. He got fenders all knocked in. Now he's pushed to the outside. Uh, boy, you see smoke. <laughs> yeah, fenders are dragging. Terry Cook cutting some slack, and we got a wreck and oh, oh, turn. Eric four. Darnell gets turned around. Joey Clanton into him. Bobby Hamilton able to maneuver around without problems. It's Eric Darnell in the 99. Joey Clanton in the 09. I think Joey was just—he's been doomed the last several laps. He—he uh, he just couldn't uh, had trouble over in turn two. Now he had trouble in turn four. That all really started from the 60 truck and a couple other guys. We'll see this. They get wadded up in front of these guys, and it's that chain reaction bottleneck thing, and, uh, and it ends up with a wreck. Look back at what's just taken place here. Watch the 60 truck lead left of your screen. He gets a little contact from the 47 of Craig Kenzer, has to chase it up the hill. Then, then he comes the down into Crawford. 14 knocks him into the 88 of Matt Crafton. And this, this, uh, this just jumbles everything yeah, up. It, it backed everything up behind these guys now. Now they're trying to recover. 
We've seen that 99 three wide several times a day. Looked like the 13 of Willie Allen hit the curb and ran into the 99 of Eric Darnell. Then the 09 of Joey Clinton had absolutely nowhere to go, and he makes contact. And Ken Schrader in the 18 truck also had nowhere to go. There's another view of Jack getting extremely loose. He gets knocked into the 88 of Mac Crafton and then, then tries to gather it up down the front stretch. Ken Schrader did a great job in that Bobby Hamilton racing truck to avoid that most recent caution as we take a look at that coming up here in just a moment. Kenny makes a little bit of contact right at the end of this, but I don't think it hurt his truck at all. There's a 09 of Joy Clint. We're going to get a view, a good view right here. Go low, go low. Uh. Yeah, go low, but unfortunately, he was already committed to the high yeah. side. I don't think I would want to, I don't think he could go low, and it wouldn't have worked anyway. Chris Devota. Well, it's a good thing that Martinsville is not an aerodynamic track because Jack Sprague is about to lose a lot of sheet metal. Four or five guys at one time pulling the sheet metal away, standing on that left front tire, trying to clear it. Jack Sprague is down and away with a very ugly left front of his race truck. And a helmet missing right now. One of the crew guys' helmet. NASCAR requires all the crewmen that go over the wall to wear a helmet and gloves. And somebody, somebody has lost their helmet. It's not a, at least it's not a driver's helmet. <laughs> and we'll find out whose helmet that was as the melee continues at Martinsville. Craftsman Truck Series Racing on Fox is sponsored by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Craftsman, available at Sears. By Toyota, moving forward. By DirecTV, just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on DirecTV. And by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Glad you're with us on Fox and Martinsville under our 10th caution. 53 laps to go. Mike Skinner is threatening the most laps led mark here at Martinsville. Rich Bickle owns that, 204. And uh, Skinner's about a dozen away. In fact, he's led all but seven laps in this race, toying with the rest of the field. We said rookie Joey Clanton involved in that last caution here with T.J. Bell in the 50 truck. Clant was involved a little bit earlier. That brought out the eighth caution of the day. And we showed you in Terry Cook's pit box. Watch D.J. That's Danny Johnson gets hung up. He's like, wait a minute, I can't leave yet. Look out, Danny. D.J.'s okay. His feelings are a little bit hurt. And Mike Skinner, we've talked about him uh, dominating, and that's what he's done so far in the five truck in that Toyota. In fact, Toyota has won all of the truck races so far this year. They dominated the series last year with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel truck stop inside here. And we, we got him a Hans device, buckled him in so he wouldn't. Yeah, okay, don't you start. I was going to say, it's dangerous down on pit road. You don't believe me. Go ask that guy on the 59 crew. He, uh, we, we hope he's okay. It's he's fine. Early report that he is, and we could because we care. Let's set the strategy here. Is anybody going to be able Able to catch Mike Skinner. I think Kevin Harvick is still sitting back there being patient. He realizes how many laps has got left. He doesn't want to tear his truck up getting around, you know, Bodine, but I think he's going to have to push him out of the way pretty soon. Craftsman Truck Series Racing on Fox is sponsored by Chevy, the most wins in NASCAR history, an American revolution. And that patience thing comes into play now as we close in on the final 50 laps of this race. Got a meter on your dash. It's just about ready to get pegged. <laughs> the patient meter is about to run out. Darrell, I think it's time to go now. I mean, oh, yeah. If he has anything for Mike Skinner, he's going to have to move Ty Bodine, as Jeff Hammond said, out of the way now because he wants to have a number of laps. Just, just because he moves up to Mike Skinner's rear Decla doesn't mean he's going to be able to drive right no, by no. him. As, he needs some time to work him. As good as uh, Mike's been, Skinner in the five, I mean, uh, like I said, Harvey's going to have to have some time to work on him. So you're going to get around Todd pretty quick. Todd Bodine hauling the lumber here at Martinsville today. It's Mike Skinner out in front. Quick move to the inside by Terry Cook. Again, Terry Cook a lap down, battling side by side with Kevin Harvick. Harvick will be challenging for second as they make their way through three and four. Harvick was able to clear the lap truck of Terry Cook. Now nobody in front of him but the 30 of Todd Bodine. Look at this squad, three, four wide. 
These are trucks racing in the top 10, the 75 and Venice Setzer. He's being shown eighth right now. PJ Allmendinger with a strong performance in that double zero. Dropped to ninth, but was as high as seventh recently. Pretty good job for AJ, uh, all things considered. He so really, a little experience in these kind of vehicles. And he really credited uh, his time in the truck yesterday with being a big factor in him winning. Winning. Whoa. Game. Whoa. Right was Dennis Robin. Setzer. Oh. And AJ into the wall. Dennis Setzer got spun around in front of him. AJ a little hard, probably off that corner, got into the wall coming off. Got into the loose stuff up yeah, there. Yeah, a lot got of marbles. The loose stuff. See some damage to the 75 truck. Dennis gets Poor it right. Dennis. He, that's the second time he's been turned around down in turns one and two. I don't know what the 16's thinking, racing a daggum lap truck. That was a spotter, Johnny Chapman, telling he doesn't know what uh, what the 16 of Stacy Compton was thinking. Here's another view right there. Just gets loose, the 16 does, and that caused him to push up into Dennis Setzer. And of course, you can see everybody taking evasive action. And A.J. Allmendinger in the double zero, like you said, Phil, hot tires, picks up that debris on his tires and slaps the fence. There's another view of it right here. You see the 16, Stacy Compton has to chase that truck up the hill. That's the 46 of Timothy Peters trying to drive by. You see A.J. He does a great job missing him, but he has no control. It's like he's on ice. He turns the steering wheel and goes straight into the outside wall. Stacy Compton saying that the left rear tire went down on that number 16. So they come in to do service on his truck. Probably did because there was huge contact between him and some other trucks up here in, in turn four a lap earlier. So he probably did get that tire cut down. A lot of damage to the outside of that number 16. There's damage to the front left of it. There's a 75 of Dennis Setzer. You see the damage on the left front of here, Spears truck. Dennis bringing the truck down into his pit stall. Chris Devota. Guys, and this, you know, there may could be a silver lining to this. Possibly that left front was about to go down anyway, so he is getting a chance to pull some of that sheet metal there away with that contact. But to change these tires, the only thing Dennis was concerned of, he's not sure if they have another set that is as good as the ones they had on. They need to yeah, pull the sheet metal away. You know, one thing about spinning here at Martinsville, you don't spin far because you're only down to about 60 miles an hour in the center of the corner. When Dennis spun down there, it wasn't like a long slide where you would flat spot those tires. He's probably okay. Oh yeah, I don't think there's any problem with the tires. He just wanted fresh tires. There's a look at that previous lap where yeah, this is that tire went down. Yeah, back in turn four, they start making contact here. Right side by side, actually rubbing as they go down the back stretch. Yeah, it's coming off two, coming to four down here. Yeah. It's so frustrating for Dennis Setzer. He's running in the top ten, and even though Stacy Compton probably has a good truck, he's a lap down, and you never want to have to mess with a truck that's a lap down when you're racing for a top ten position. You just can't give up anything if you're a lap down or you're racing the lead for the lead, because if you do, somebody will take a spot away from you, and now you got to get back around that guy again. So it gets real frustrating. It's one thing you don't want to have running high at the end of this race is tempers. Oh, it will be. I'll guarantee you. Again, Major League Baseball kicking off next week. Actually, a week from today, about this time, you'll be seeing Major League Baseball here on Fox. This is actually playing into uh, Mike Skinner's hands probably more than anyone else's. He's saving that truck, and we know it's plenty fast. All he's got to do is not make any mistakes, and oh, oh man, oh, oh. early on, that's Kevin Harvick. We're riding along with in the two. He gets shuffled out. They tried to go three wide in turn one. Yeah, the 77 of Brendan Gaughan decided to jump in the middle around a lap truck, forced Kevin to the outside. He's still not able to get down. Gets a little shot from Timothy Peters right there. I think Kevin's got a bunch of debris on his tires. Just can't get going here until he gets it cleaned off. He's gonna. He lost so much track position right now that he is out of contention for this race. Well, he just totally hit the wall. He just hit the wall hard off of two over there. I talked about tempers. I'm guessing right now, Kevin Harvick's temper is through the roof. Watch yeah. the 77 of Brendan Gaughan jumps in the middle to try to go around the 88 of Matt Kraft and Kevin does not think he, that he would have done that. Not a Chases him all the way up the hill and watch all these trucks drive by Kevin. Here's a, car, a truck that had a shot to win and here he gets into the fence again. Got a shot to win the race and he gets to run over by guys two laps down. That wasn't a good move. And Kevin has shown a tremendous amount of uh, patience <laughs> yes. this entire race. He's been in he's been in the restraint mode for quite a while now. But as 
you can tell, Phil, the intensity has picked up considerably by not just anybody, but by everybody. 40 laps remaining in this one. Mike Skinner out in front of Todd Bodine. Todd Bodine probably the closest he's been to Skinner since we've gone green flag laps. Got another uh, spin on turn four. Jerry Cook in the 59. No caution yet. They're going to see if oh, caution is out now. Yeah, 59 just your barely. Mirror, come on, leader in your mirror. Come on. Yellow's out. There's been some common denominators in a lot of these wrecks. There has. There has. Same number of guys seem to be involved. Who got Terry Cook around? Well, I think he had a little help from Eric Darnell in that number 99. Both of them trying for the same real estate. There he bounces off the curb. Terry didn't leave him quite enough room on the on the inside. We'll be back with more of Box. Craftsman Truck Series Racing on Fox is sponsored by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Craftsman, available at Sears. By Toyota, moving forward. By DirecTV, just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on DirecTV. And by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. It's the Kroger 250 from Martinsville Speedway, the first short track race of the 2007 season, and Mike Skinner has dominated. 209 laps led today. That is a new Martinsville truck laps led record. See He's continuing to add to that mark. Saw that there's a two truck right there of Kevin Harvick. Look at the right side. Uh, if we get a it's shot right. of the right, the wheels are just covered up with concrete dust, and I think there's even concrete laid up. <laughs> Look at those <laughs> wheels. <laughs> Almost like white walls. Yeah, yeah. Hadn't slowed him down much. Such a good truck, too. What a shame. But uh, obviously, he's only back to seventh, so he's still in contention. But as far as being in contention for the win, I really don't think he can get there from seventh. Well, now it depends on how Todd and uh, Mr. Skinner negotiate these last few laps. Yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't ever been able to count out somebody either making a mistake or getting a little aggressive up in the front of the field and allowing somebody third, fourth, or fifth to come up and grab the win. Aren't those two a little bit of rivals? We do have a little bit of history between the two of these guys. I think Johnny Skinner Benson was the beneficiary of one of their little escapades over in Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee. That's they were exactly right. they were fighting for the win and made some contact. Ended up both crashing, mm -hmm. and JB just drove by and got the win. Could Rick Crawford might be remembering <laughs> that just like we are. He's saying, "Hey, I think these guys need to uh, relive that rivalry." Skinner gets the green flag once again as we restart at Martinsville. 12 cautions have flown thus far in the race. 32 laps of racing to go. You know, that nine truck right there. Ted Musgrave's had a pretty quiet day, but he's in a great position right now in the top five. Yes, he is. Uh, but the thing about Mike Skinner in the five, he just launches off the corner uh, without spinning the tires, and it doesn't look like the thing's shoving the nose. He drives it in nice and smooth, but man, when he gets right there, he picks up the throttle. He is long gone. Chris Devota. these closing laps before this thing went green again Todd got on the radio and said hey do you think Mike would just let us lead a lap they said his crew goes ah, he's a point leader probably not and Todd said I just want one I would be afraid that he wouldn't let me back by <laughs> yeah if I was Mike Skinner absolutely not yeah I'm pretty sure I know how that would work out I'm not sure I'd want to get out in front of Mike Skinner with as much strength as Skinner has shown Skinner might just move oh, Bodine out of the way and then we see Johnny Benson spinning around, but guess how that happened? The green flag stays out. One of those guys that has been really patient this race. <laughs> yeah, they hit the wall this yeah, little while just ago. A minute ago. We're, we're riding with him right now. along with him. Kevin Harvey just helping Johnny out of the way moments ago. There's Johnny, he gets seized up a little bit behind the eight truck of Blake Bjorklund, and Kevin just has such a good run through the center of the corner. JB did a great job doing a 360 right in the middle of the field. And without getting run over by somebody. Let's take another look right along with Kevin. That's a whoops. I don't think there was any malicious intent on that one. You could hear Kevin. He, if he was back in the throttle, it was just barely. Yeah. But no, he had I, such a good run through the center. I think what he wanted to do was nerf him up out of the way and get by clean. Kevin Harvick back to sixth. In front of him for position is his actual truck, Ron Hornaday, where he's the owner of that truck. The 33 is running in fifth. 
Well, let me tell you about Kevin Hart because if we look at our leader here, and there's a Chase Miller again. Chase Miller no up against the outside wall with more trouble. Guy's been in more trouble today than. No, oh, he's whoa, got whoa. Flat, flat right side tires. Gosh, he came right down in front of Aaron Fike. In front oh, of Fike in a one truck. 13th. 13th caution of the day has come out. Once again, Chase Miller involved. Wow, how'd that happen? It just jumped sideways on me, and I was just trying to save it up the wall. See that right front tire doing a lot, a lot more damage to that fender than he already had. Here's another view of it. It was already smoking as he entered the corner. I think that tire had already gone down and went down on the straightaway, and he. I think he just drove in there feeling locked the brakes up, and uh, the thing wouldn't turn. And in turn, it must have blown out the left front tire. That's after it already happened. And or the right foot tire. Yeah, riding yeah. around the racetrack yeah. and just drove in the corner too hard with a flat tire. Yeah. So Mike Skinner still out in front, continuing to lead laps around Martinsville, adding to his new record here at this track. Two laps to go. The truck race here on Fox with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, and we're under caution the 13th of the day. Mike Skinner has dominated. 13. Right. We've only had three leaders. In fact, actually, uh, right, Skinner won 13 days ago and 13 mm -hmm. years ago, won the first truck race. But uh, could Todd Bodine, who won this series last year and has moved up to second in points, second in this race, catch him? I don't think so. I mean, all the way I think Todd's got a shot at him is during these restarts. I mean, he came in early in this race, took on tires, and I think, if anything, as Daryl's been saying all along, his left side tires are probably going to give up right here at the end of this race. He may wind up being in trouble himself, not really having to worry about our leader. All right, let's get some thoughts from Phil, DW, and Rick upstairs. Well, I tell you what, we haven't seen a lot of moving other guys out of the way for position yet. Are we going to see that now as we have about 20 laps? By all means. And, and <laughs> I, I, believe, I believe if Todd Bodine can get to Skinner, he will let him know he's there. Those two could go at each other. We know there's a rivalry there. Ted Musgrave is sitting in pretty good shape. Don't count Kevin Harvick out either. Say. These cautions have caught him back up. His truck's damaged, but he ain't done yet. He's not done. And you know, he's hot under the collar now. He was so patient <laughs> yeah. this entire race. Yeah. And then he gets turned around there. He's back up to six right now. If he can get by a couple guys, then he may be back in this thing. And we are about to go back to green. Again, Mike Skinner out in front, Todd Bodine, then Rick Crawford, Ted Musgrave, Ron Hornaday are your top five. Kevin Harvick just outside the top five and six. Mike Skinner has been pretty flawless on these restarts. The nine of Ted Musgrave got a little bit sideways right there. There's Kevin Harvick right there. That's another truck that he owns, the Ron Hornaday, number 33, right in front of him. You see a little contact between the nine of Musgrave and the 16 of Compton. And Stacy Compton not on the lead lap. Ted Musgrave running in fourth, Hornaday fifth, Kevin Harvick in sixth. Stacy's not making a whole lot of friends here with these uh, guys racing for uh, position and he being a lap down. He doesn't really, he's not doing anything wrong. It's just that he's uh, in their way right now trying to race for, you know, a position. You fight for so much room here in Martinsville and there's just not that much room. He sees now Stacy's on the outside. He needs to stay up here, stay in the second lane and leave, leave enough room for Kevin Harvick to drive by on the inside. As, as, beat up, as, Har as beaten up as Harvick's truck is, it's incredible it's still running as fast as it is. Out in front, though, there's about three truck links between Mike Skinner and Todd Bodine. Bodine trying to hold on to that back bumper, but also not holding up Rick Crawford anymore. So that shows you how much Skinner's pulling ahead. It looked like Skinner beat Todd Bodine by three truck lengths off that corner. It looked like Todd may have been spinning his wheels. And as you said earlier, Mike Skinner just launched off that corner. Mike is driving the classic Martinsville line. Floated in, not using a lot of brake, but when he gets right there, he can just go wide open and the truck doesn't scoot, doesn't slide, she just digs. 15 laps to go, the interval between one and two, a half a second. But just believe one thing, Todd Bodine is not finished. Todd Bodine is gonna step it up a notch here with about 10 to go. 
We're having some good runs for some rookies here. We've got Aaron Fike, the one truck running seventh, and Tyler Walker, another rookie, in the 36 running eight. And these guys, Phil, have picked it up to now 2027 and a 2031 between our two front car uh, trucks right now. They are turning it up a notch. Ty Bodine ran his fastest lap of the race two laps ago. On old, old tires. Just shows you he's saving a little something, hoping he can get up there to the back bumper. There's a Skinner. case. There's a case right there. The six of, of Travis Quapple moved that 08 out of the way. And the aftermath, the 08 got punted into the wall. Caution well, back out again. Right side, right front, Dan. A lot of damage to Chad McCombie's 08 Chevy Silverado. That brings out our 14th caution of the day. Now, when we restart, we'll be inside of 10 laps, and so that will mean we will be a single file restart. No more lap down trucks on the inside. And that'll be good news to a lot of these guys on the lead lap. Not enough real estate here in the corner. There's a six of Travis Quapple. He makes contact with Chad McCombie, the 08. That puts him up the hill. Now, A.J. Allmendinger and the 75 of Dennis Setzer come by. They're already side by side. Just doesn't leave any room. As all of that was taking place, Kevin Harvick got by Ron Hornaday. So Harvick now into the top five. Boy, he's sure running out of time, though. He's still got some good trucks in front of him. Ted Musgrave's been good all day. He's fourth. The 14 of Rick Crawford, a former winner here. He's running third. He's been good all day. I'll tell you what, though, he got by his, his uh, own truck there, the 33 of Harvey. That is a hard lick, guys, in that outside wall. And that was no safer barrier. There's barrier there. The safer barrier had already stopped because that was well off the corner. Pretty good lick. Taking a look at Kevin Harvick in the cockpit there. Jack Sprague, we've ridden along with him today as well at Martinsville. Again, the first short track race of the season for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. This series born on the short tracks. Sprague's had a pretty rough day. He's gotten beaten around all day long. Ray right, Dunlap, what's going on with Mike Skinner? Hey, yeah, guys, I just wanted to add about Mike Skinner. You know, you're talking about what a role he's been on in the last two seasons. Nobody spent more time out front of the field than him. But check this out. 17 times in his career, he's led the most laps in a race and did not go on to win. I'm well, sure he would appreciate Ray putting a jinx on him right there. It's going to take a mental era for him to, to not win this race. His truck is too much, it's so much better than uh, everybody else's. Miss a shift, spin the tires, something, some mistake. We're not going, Mike, we're not going. And what a start to the 2007 season oh. for Skinner. Fourth at Daytona, he wins at California, he wins at Atlanta, and now has led the most laps here at Martinsville in our first four races. Winning three in a row on three different racetracks, uh, just incredible. From the pole, leading the most laps here today, what a performance. We have to give a lot of credit to Jeff Hensley and his crew, though. These guys have really done it week in, week out. He's got a good truck to race with. His guys have been flawless on pit road, especially today. He's never lost the lead on pit road. What a what a great job. Yeah, obviously a reminder, a week from today, it's Major League Baseball on Fox. Green flag back out at Martinsville. You know, Jeff Hensley sitting there on that toolbox, he grew up just a few miles from this racetrack. And uh, Jimmy Hensley, always fast and always successful here. That family has a lot of heritage here at this racetrack. Yeah, Jeff's dad, Hubert Hensley, owned Jimmy's Bush cars for years and years and years, and late model sports, and even before the Bush series was started back in 1982. Yeah, his cousin Jimmy, who is, like I said, notorious here, he won this race in 1999. Mike Skinner out in front of this field. Predominantly the whole day. Only two other drivers have been out in front. Ted Musgrave led a lap. Chad McCum McCombie was able to lead six laps. But it's been the Mike Skinner show pretty much the entire day. And that's a view of some of the trucks that have had extreme damage. Should be five to go to the line. Get the count down, Jim. Five to go. Five. He opened up about three truck lanes on the 30 of Tombo 9. Todd would sure like to see see something uh, just break his momentum a little bit, but I just don't think it's going to happen. That five truck is up. 
My, my. We saw the train go by earlier, and <laughs> yeah. we said it was on a rail. Well, I tell you what, Mike Skinner looks like he's on a rail here at Martinsville. Pitch strategy, perfect. Started on the pole, led all the laps. It right. illustrates how important qualifying is here. Now, Todd Bodine was able to parlay a poor qualifying effort into some good pitch strategy, ended up, up in the top two. Kevin <laughs> Harvick got shuffled out oh, earlier, dropped all the way back to time. seven. He's battled his way back to fourth now as he just went by Ted Musgrave. Yeah, that's Three a laps to go. great recovery. No, no Ron would have probably run third, so he's going to get back to where he almost was. Problems with the double zero of A.J. Allmendinger. And as we so. are inside of three laps, that means we will have a green-white checkered finish for the truck series. Jason Overstreet. And they're all saying, what happened? Angie Skinner hoping that this one would have continued green until we saw the checkered. It did not. We'll take another look at what happened to A.J. Allmendinger in that double zero. It's rolling off here in the corner underneath. Oh. Yeah, the 60 gets into the seven. The 60 of Jack Sprague gets into the seven of Brad Keselowski, and that forces him up into the double zero of A.J. Allmendinger. And there, there, there's a result. Watch this. The 60 is going to get into the left rear corner of the seven, get him sideways. He has to chase it. He makes contact with the double zero of A.J. Allmendinger. A.J. done a great job up until this, the last little bit, and none of this has been his fault necessarily, just uh, bad luck. On board with Jack Sprague. Just a little bit of contact. Clear, clear. Isn't it amazing the guy that always seems to cause the accident? He drives on off and somebody else pays the price. I remember you here one time running third going <laughs> in turn number three. <laughs> you remember that, yeah, do I remember you? that, yeah. It was a, just a slight bit of contact between what you and Terry Labonte, maybe? I bumped Terry and Terry hit Dale and they spun out and I drove to victory. <laughs> I led I led from turn four to the start yeah. finish line. That's all I led that you, day. You didn't think I would remember that. No, I was you? hoping you wouldn't bring it up. <laughs> that was a five ball in the three pocket. We talked earlier about Nashville. The way that Todd Bodine and Mike Skinner actually ended up moving each other out of the way. Well, we've got a green white checkered finish here scheduled and that could mean good things for Rick Crawford who's running yeah. third right now. This is this series here. The truck series is where that green white checkered thing came from. Uh, they had that in place long before they ever instituted into the cup series. So these guys are accustomed to this and I bet you if you asked Ray, he probably know how many times they've had one of these. <laughs> Ray is well equipped to give us the green white checkered statistics. They will have one attempt at a green white checkered finish again when they come to the green flag it will be the green then the white and we will see the checkered and it is about to come out the green flag for Mike Skinner two laps of racing to go if he can just get through one and two clean without Todd making contact I think he's going to be okay that five just it doesn't take anything at all that baby just launches up out of the hole two truck link lead over Todd Bodine as he makes his way through three and four coming out the white flag flies half a mile for Mike Skinner. Spotter Mike Swain going to talk him through it. He's got about a two truck rank lead right now. Oh, he's got it made. He's sailing down into turn three. Nice and easy right on the bottom like he's been all day long. He looks up. He sees the flag in the air. Mike Skinner. What a day. Dominant performance for Mike Skinner. He wins his 22nd career race at Martinsville Speedway celebrating three in a row now for Mike Skinner. Good job. Good job, Mike. The second time he has won, won three races in a row. Today, huh? That's the voice of Jeff Hensley, his crew chief, saying, Mike Skinner, you won this race today. I'd say they did their part. I'd be giving them a lot of credit, and I know he will. That truck was flawless. Mike Skinner now adds his name to the list of drivers who have won two races at this racetrack. Dennis Setzer was the only one to do it before. Now Mike Skinner has won two races for Martinsville. And when I think about Skinner, I really think about him being a really aggressive super speedway racer and almost too aggressive to be a good short track racer. But boy, today he parlayed that aggression and uh, controlled it. And baby, he won this thing pulling away. Unless he hits at the wall while doing his donuts here, he's driven a flawless race. It's a pretty narrow little front straightaway to be doing that right there. That's 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 sweet right there, boys. <laughs> the that is a dozen of them. Celebration.
for Mike Skinner. He'll make it to victory lane and we'll come back and talk to him right after this. Fox Sports welcomes you back for the Craftsman Truck Series in Virginia. It's Skinnerville today. Mike Skinner dominating 246 laps out of 253 additional laps with the green white checker and down there Chris Devoto with the winner. Well, if you look up Martinsville and domination in the dictionary, you will see a new picture. It will be this man, Mike Skinner, the gunslinger as he climbs out of his Toyota Tundra. There it goes. Martinsville, there they are, there's the guns. Martinsville known for hot dogs, sometimes hot tempers, and this red hot Toyota. Mike Skinner, three wins this year. I gotta ask, are you gonna let anyone else win a race? Gosh, I hope not. Uh, you know, I wanna say hi to Ted Johnson. Uh, he's under the weather a little bit, and uh, you know, BD wasn't here today. I had both beautiful wives. Sorry about your luck, BD. Um, I just got to thank Todd Bodine for being such a gentleman on the racetrack. He could have very easily run off in there and knocked me in the back, and he probably would have won the race. And uh, uh, Todd, when the shoe's on the other foot, you'll get the same respect. Thank you. But uh, man, I, I, I got to dedicate this race to the Hensley family. They're, they're, they live right up the road, raced against Jimmy Hensley for years. Jeff Hensley wanted to win this race worse than Daytona, and Hubert and all the Hensleys have been around Martinsville here for years and years and years. So. This one's for the Hensleys. A lot of tradition. Mike Skinner, a three-peat winner in 07. Ray Dunlap. And Krista, Brendan Gunn just walked over to apologize to Kevin Harvick, but they called you Mr. Patience today. We're wondering if you learned anything that'll make your car good enough to win tomorrow. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, for the most part, the track stayed pretty consistent today. Our truck was really good. The Camping World Chevrolet guys did a, did a good job. And, uh, you know, we just uh, had to try to be patient behind a 30. It was time to, to really go there. but. Um, just came up a little bit short. We got, got in the wrong place at the wrong time. A lot of fun racing these trucks, but uh, just um, wrong place. But uh, Martinsville deal and just go on with it and have fun tomorrow. All right, good luck to you tomorrow. That is Kevin Harvick. He finishes fourth. Now to Adam. Runner-up finish for Todd Bodine and Mike Skinner in victory lane. Very complimentary of the way you drove him there at the end of the race. Talk about your day, a runner-up finish, Todd. Well, Mike was being nice because I didn't have anything for him. Our Lumber Liquidators Tundra was, we got it a lot better as the race went. Uh, those pit stops, Mike Jr. made the right adjustments. I just couldn't quite roll the center as good as Mike. I could get up off as good as Mike, but I couldn't roll the center. But uh, I got us in a hole qualifying, so we had to do a little pit strategy, and it paid off. We got a good run. And Chris, it is a career best finish for Todd Bodine in a truck here at Martinsville. And a first of the truck series two different times. Mike Skinner has won three in a row. Thank you, Adam Alexander, Ray Dunlap, Chris Devota for covering things down in the pits and upstairs. Some final thoughts from Phil Parsons, Darrell Waltrip, and Rick Allen. Well, amazingly enough, Mike Skinner started off his career in the truck series with eight wins the first season, eight wins the second season. It looks like he's on that roll again. Three wins to start off the first four races of this season. He might win 24 times this year. There's, <laughs> there's 21 races left, and it doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to touch him. Well, there's races that you want to have on your resume that you won, and Martinsville is one of them. This is a very special racetrack. It's old. It's been here a long time. When you conquer this joint, it's kind of like Daytona, Bristol, Darlington, and be sure and get you one of those big clocks to take home with you while you're at it. Oh, yeah. Here at Martinsville, the trophy obviously a grandfather clock and so Mike Skinner taking that home today let's go back down to Chris and the uh, clock on the wall says that's all for us we have to wrap up <laughs> shortly it's an old DJ line all right how about so Mike Skinner 49 year old Californian but he, he loves to play billiards mm -hmm. and golf and he was either par for the course or ran the table today I got news for you right now you do not want to get in any one of those kind of competitions on either golf or playing pool with Mike Skinner. He's a hustler. He's a hustler. I'm telling you right, he put the hustle on the whole field here today at Martinsville. He was dominating from start to finish. And one other guy I want to say, give a call out to the 14th of Rick Crawford. Had a great run out there by him. As the trophy presentation takes place and a classy comment right from Mike Skinner about Todd Bodine, reminiscent of the cup race when Jeff Burton was on the heels of Kyle Busch. What goes around keeps going around if you treat each other competitively. And these are the point standings. You see that it's still 1-2 the way Skidder and Bodine came into this. You mentioned Crawford moving up a bit. How about your guy, Aaron Fike, the rookie? Yeah, had a good uh, recovery. They had a bad uh, start, dropped all the way to the back of the pack, lost a lap. Hey, finished back seventh, climbed to tenth in the points. Fox and Speed's coverage of the weekend in Martinsville continuing tomorrow. NASCAR race day on speed and then Cup Series racing. At 1.30 Eastern on the pre-race show, we'll talk with Kyle Busch and Virginian Elliott Sadler. We'll, we'll take our photo finish, DW and Jeff, with their drive and ride, so you get a better feel of the car of tomorrow around this track. 
and they'll handle some tough questions with gas and go. Kevin Harvick winding up fourth. Mike Skinner holds off Todd Bodine and Rick Crawford to win here in Martinsville. Want to wish Greg Scopatone a happy birthday, our AD. Hang on, Jeff Hammond. Things will pick up tomorrow, I promise. We'll get you a seatbelt for the show. We call him Scope, by the way. This program produced by Barry Landis, directed by Artie Kempner, David Hill, Ed Gore, and Bill Brown. They're important guys. Jacob Bowman is not. I kid because I care. Baseball a week from today, 1.30 Eastern. We'll see you NASCAR on Fox tomorrow. Thanks for watching.